If you love Taylor Swift's new album, print, it's amazing. Today we're going to be talking about statements just like that one, if statements. Now, if statements are used for decision-making operations and they allow you to implement more logic into your program. So let's see what they're all about. So previously we had talked about Boolean data types and comparison operators, logical operators, and a bunch of other ones that evaluated out to true or false. And today we're going to be tying all that together using an if statement. We can basically execute these conditional statements and implement this logic into our code. So an if statement is essentially in the format if and then some expression do this. And we can see that if this evaluates out to true, then you do this. And if we use a flowchart to express this, this is what it would look like. Basically, you evaluate the expression and if it's true, then you do this. If it's not, then you just keep going. So as some of you may know, Taylor Swift just released a bomb new album last week. It's called Folklore. So here in this example, I'm going to give Folklore a rating. So I'm going to call that Folklore Rating. And let's use a scale 1 to 10. Obviously, it's a 10. And to demonstrate exactly how this if statement works, I'm going to say if and then here comes my expression. So I'm going to say if the folklore rating is greater than seven, then print listen on repeat. What else do I want? I want to share on social media and I'm going to obsess about it, obviously. So then I'm going to also add some print statements before and after just so that, you know, we can see where exactly this if statement will run when we execute the code. So print um, what to do with folklore. And then at the very end, I'm going to print heart T Swift. Okay, so if I open up my terminal, I have to first go into the directory where my file is located in order to run that script. So I'm going to do that real quick. Okay, so if we look in there, we see that main.py is right there. Now let's execute main.py. All right, so basically this is our first statement that we're printing no matter what. This is the last statement that we're printing no matter what. And then our if statement turned out to be true because 10, our rating of folklore, is greater than seven. So it prints everything in between. For the sake of this demonstration, let's say that we accidentally typed a 1 instead of a 10. So now if I go back to terminal and I run this again, we'll see that that if statement doesn't execute because 1 is not greater than 7, so that expression ends up false. And we don't do what's under that if statement. Another note is whenever we have an if statement like this, we have an indent after the if statement. In some other languages, they don't really require like the spacing, but Python is very strict about that. If you don't have the spacing, it's not going to work. All right, so we've seen how in an if statement, if that condition of the if statement is true, we execute certain lines of code. But now what if when it's false, we want to execute other lines of code? What do we do? Instead of creating a whole new if statement, which negates the previous one, we can actually just add an else. And this else is saying, if the thing that you evaluated is actually false, then run this other code. So let's add that into our Taylor Swift folklore example. So right now, if folklore is greater than seven, then we're gonna listen on repeat, share on social media, and obsess about it. But if it's not, so that's where we include our else. So otherwise, we're going to print, did you make a mistake in the rating? So let's run this. All right. So right now our folklore rating is a 10. So of course we see the if statement evaluated. And remember previously when we changed it to a one, this is what we saw. But now if our folklore rating is a one, It does print, did you make a mistake? Did you a mistake in the, I made a mistake in that uh, print statement, but 
we see that it prints out what is under that else. All right, now what if you want to include some more logic in there? And that's where an else if statement comes into play. So what's really cool about these else ifs is that you can actually keep chaining them. And in a single if statement, you might actually have up to like 10 else ifs in there. Probably not good like coding practice, but I'm just saying it's possible. So let's take a look at our Taylor Swift example and see how we can fit an else if in there. We have if folklore rating is greater than seven, then we do these three things. Else if, so elif, the folklore rating is greater than five. So, you know, maybe it's not your quarantine vibe. I don't know. We're gonna print talk to T Swift fans because we might convince you otherwise. Anyways, let's see what'll happen when we run each of these. And of course we've seen this like first and last statement. So I'm just gonna comment those out so that we don't actually see those running anymore. Let's adjust our folklore rating so that we go down each of these branches of the if statement. Our folklore rating of 10, let's clear that, is gonna give us listen on repeat, share on social media, obsess about it. Cool. Now, what about our folklore rating of six? So now we'll notice that folklore rating six is not greater than seven, so it doesn't evaluate these statements, but in our next condition, six is greater than five. So theoretically, we should be printing this out. Talk to T-Swift fans. So we see that this actually executes this statement right there. And then of course, if we change this to one, did you make a mistake in the rating? I haven't fixed that yet. Wait, did you make a mistake in the rating? So now we kind of see how the value that we assign to folklore rating actually tells this if statement which part to execute. And what's really cool about Python is we can actually also include the user input. So here I'm gonna do input and how do you rate folklore? I'm gonna cast this as a float, which we touched on in our data types tutorial. So watch what happens when I change it to this. I run. And now it's actually gonna have me type in something or else it doesn't execute the rest of it. And I'm gonna give it 100. And if I click enter, then it tells me all of this. You listen on repeat, share on social media, obsess about it. All right, let's run that again. How do you rake folklore? I, my hand slipped, I typed negative sign, negative one. Did you make a mistake in the rating? Oh, look at that, yes I did. So the takeaways of this lesson on conditionals is that you can kind of treat these if statements as different branches. And every single time that you come across a conditional, basically evaluating that is telling you which branch to take. And so this condition can be anything that evaluates out to true or false. And actually, it doesn't have to be just Boolean. So if I erase this example and I'm now saying condition and this equals zero, let's see what happens when we try to evaluate that. So if condition print executed. So this is just like a simple if else statement to tell me to tell me if it's been executed or not, uh, not executed. Okay. So let's go back to our terminal, clear that, python3 main.py, and our condition is zero. So what do you think is gonna happen? We actually see that this is not executed. Python will evaluate anything that represents empty. whether it's zero or an empty list like this or an empty string. Those will all turn out to be false according to Python. So let me run this again just to prove that. Whereas if you have a string that has some content in it, that actually evaluates out to true. So that does get executed. And likewise, you know, if I have a number, then that's not zero, then that also gets executed. All right, so one last if statement for you guys. If you've liked this video, click that like button. If you like highly, click that subscribe button. Thanks for joining me. See you guys next time.